Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician. On this video, we're gonna take another look at how we can use the completing the square method to help us solve a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and jump right into an example problem where I'm given an equation x squared minus eight x minus five equals three. And I wanna use the completing the square method to help me determine what those x-intercepts are. So first things first, when we're using the completing the square method, is we need to build a generic rectangle out so that we can show how we're going to complete the square for this quadratic. Now I know that x squared is gonna go in the bottom left corner, and now I need to think about what I'm going to put in these two spots here on the generic rectangle, that diagonal, and that diagonal is gonna be made up of the negative eight x's there. And since I'm trying to make a square, I need to split those negative eight x's evenly. I need to split it in half. So when we take negative eight and we divide it by two, we're gonna end up with negative four x and negative four x in that diagonal there. That shows us that we've separated the negative eight x in half. And now when I go ahead and write the sides of my generic rectangle, I know I'll have x and x, and I'm going to have negative four and negative four which is so important for us because we're trying to make a square. And for this to be a square, that means that these sides here do have to be exactly the same. They need to be equal. Now that I'm at this spot, I need to think about what am I going to need to add here so that I can complete this square and start to solve this problem. Well, since I have negative four and a negative four here and I'm multiplying that, Negative four times negative four is going to give me a positive 16. So I know that in order to complete the square for this quadratic equation, I need to add 16 unit tiles to have a full complete square. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that equation, the x squared minus eight x minus five, and it equals three. I know though that I'm gonna need to add 16 to both sides so that I can start to solve this problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase that negative five in there so I can squeeze in the fact that I have to add 16 and then I'm gonna add back in the minus five. Well, I added 16 to the left side, I gotta make sure I add 16 to the right side as well. So I'm gonna show that by writing plus 16 on both sides. Now again, just like with the previous video where I introduced the completing the square method, I'm gonna focus in on that highlighted equation because that highlighted equation, x squared minus eight x plus 16, that is our generic rectangle here. That's the inside pieces, that's the sum. I wanna change that sum into the product and the product of that equation ends up being in the sides of this generic rectangle, which are both x minus four. So I have x minus four, the quantity squared. I have the minus five at the end, and it's still equal to three plus 16, which is going to make 19. At this point, we have completed the square. We're left with this equation that we can solve to determine what our x-intercepts are. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna need to first add this five over to the right side. By doing that, I'm leaving my x variable all by itself here on the left side x minus four, the quantity squared, and it equals 19 plus five. And 19 plus five is 24. Now I wanna get x by itself, so I'm gonna to need to take the square root of both sides. So I'll take the square root of the left and the square root of the right. Those squares and the square roots on the left cancel. So we're just left with x minus four equals the square root of 24. But remember, that's the positive answer. I'll also end up with a negative answer. And the negative answer will be the same thing, x minus four equals negative root 24. Now you're probably starting to realize that 24 is not a perfect square, and the square root of that is going to be an irrational number. It's gonna be a number that has an infinite amount of numbers after the decimal place. And this is why we do completing the square. When you end up with irrational numbers, the box and diamond method doesn't work. We can't use the zero product property. It only works when we have whole number or fractional answers. 
not for when we have irrational numbers. So what we have to do now is we have to pull up our calculator and type in what the square root of 24 is so that we can continue to solve this problem. So I'm gonna open up my calculator here and I'm gonna type in 24 and the square root and I see that, yep, that is definitely an irrational number. I'm gonna go ahead and round that to four point, I would say it rounds to 4.899. Super close to actually becoming five, but it does round up to 4.899. I know over here, this one will be negative 4.899. And we can now start to solve this by writing out the rest of that equation. This ends up being where the easy part is, where now the only last step I have to do is I need to add that constant over to the other side. It's the same for both equations here. Those fours are gonna cancel. On the left side, I end up with x equals 4.899 plus four. That's gonna make 8.899. Remember, we did round that square root of 24. We rounded it to three decimal places. So we can't say equals here, but we can say that it is approximately that number. That is one of those x-intercepts. Now let's do the other one. I'm adding four there, so x is going to end up equaling negative 0.899. Again, that is our other x-intercept there. We cannot use the equal sign. It is an irrational number. But by using the completing the square method, we were able to find out what those x-intercepts are despite them being irrational. It's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.